be someone because the works we're looking at bodywork on the 60 truck and did someone say SS Mercedes? Let's get to the workshop. Right, this time on Custom Works, we've been looking at bodywork and we've been looking at the 60s truck. Now, a lot of people think the 60s truck is like, da -da, that's it. But it's really, really rough up close. Let's have a look. Like, say on this door. Yeah, that's, that's all just raw filler. And then down here, oh, it's the Bondo dump of where I've been dumping all the little bits of Bondo I've had left. But this, this doesn't need to be like this, like some crazy stucco wall. What it needs to be is mirror smooth and in gloss white. So that's what we're gonna do. Around the other side of the car, I'm gonna work from the front to the back and just try to smooth everything down. I'm gonna be looking at sandpaper, primer, all the things that take this nightmare to, well, imagine something like, oh, shining like a car. Yeah, got that, boom, to that. Right, so the 60s truck. 60s truck looks the shape it's going to be, and you know, at a distance, it really is the shape it's going to be up close. Yeah, it's nice. It's a lot of rough filler and um, lines that aren't sharp, and oh, it's just a mess. So I'm putting all that right. So I like to get the shape right and the sort of the outward lines, then go in on the details after. So I've been doing a lot on this side of the truck. I've smoothed all this out. I've got this curve nice. I've done some blending in on the front fenders there so that there's no seam, rounded it up nice. But at the minute, what I'm looking at is this running board. I've got a small garage seat as well. This is like revolutionizing my life. I don't have to ruin my knees anymore. This rear fender skirt didn't line up. There was a, a bit at the bottom that gives it rigidity. That didn't line up with this and it was, it was really annoying. So what I've done here, I've glassed on a piece of aluminium and what I've used is a piece like this and it's box section that I've ripped down on the table saw that's meant for wood. But hey, it worked, so it's fine. If it works, it's okay. So I've ripped that down. So that's got a nice bit of rigidity. Now this one is still pretty straight, but this I've put a curve in, bought it back and I've fiberglassed it in here I'm going to cut this edge off. Now, I didn't want to, I didn't want to wrap this round so I didn't want bubbles there and there. I want a good, strong bond up there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to trim all this off. This is a little bit higher than this, so I'm probably going to put some fiberglass down, this part of the sill, and then blend that in. And by the end of this, the sill will just run in one straight line from front fender straight through along here, and then into the back. And then at the back, well, that's where that bumper actuates and slides underneath the car. That's gonna take some real thinking as to how to make that all articulate nice, but when it's, you know, in its proper position, all just looks like standard car. So, all to play for, all to stay for, a lot of Bondo going on today. Let's get to it. So this bit's going really good. Um, I first built this up with um, fiberglass, you know, like the red U-Pol B. <laughs> That's what I did. I, um, I built this up with fiberglass and now I'm just going over it with some filler. But if we take a look from over here, you can see this line is uh, really crooked and not fluid at all. Around this part, um, I'll bring this up so it goes in and then long block that whole thing just so that that line between the uh, the running board and the fender skirt is just one straight flat curve. C curve, curve. What that does, that will bring a, a real sort of a real flow through, and also enhance how this car tapers towards the back. This 
is, it's starting to get super straight now. Probably about the fifth or sixth application of filler. And it is starting to get that real line that flows from that front arch all the way, bows back, tapers to the back. Okay, in the back of the 60s truck, we've got a problem. So we have this bit here, which is the bumper connected to the, to the Continental kit. Now, when this is in its normal place, I'll just get it there. There, six is a bumper. I know usually we'd probably have something around here to hide the bumper, but of course this bumper moves. And here's the bumper moving. And what it does, it tucks under here, but it comes through at this point, like at this point, at this, you know, here, 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 and here. It's a tough one to disguise. You know, we need a hole in, the, basically we need this hole in the side of the body, but we don't need this hole. We need to, we need to hide that totally. Um, one good thing, when it is fully open, which it's about to be, It is nearly in line, and maybe I could maybe I could alter this line, or bring this flange out so from the top you can't see what's going on so much. It's a challenging bit of bodywork, but uh, you know the sort of thing I have come across before, and uh, it does work out okay. But it's just getting all that movement to look right, and also so that when it moves it looks nice. You know you want this to come away in a in a beautiful way. So. That's what I'm trying to do at the minute. I'm trying to get all of that to look as it should. So, what I'm going to start with is looking at it and thinking, and maybe some tape and cardboard, try a few ways around of this working, settle on one, make it work. When this dips in, it goes there, but when, by the time we get to here where I've marked it, you know, we're at like the full, I know, like the full curve of it. So what I've done is, from where it pivots, which is way under there, I've um, I got a piece of wood, I measured it out, and then um, I drew a circle on some cardboard on the bench. And I've got this piece of aluminium, and I've put the curve in it that, like this point, I want to know the journey this point makes round. So I'll put that on there and bring it out a little bit. And then I'll keep adjusting this until this, as it goes round to here where I can have an opening, when this gap here is equidistant through the whole operation, then, um, then I know it's right and it will go in. But if it's, like, if it's not a perfect curve, it will go in there at first and then there and then. Then when it shuts, I'll have a big gap behind the bumper. So, yeah. But I've got to say, it's a little bit of a head scratcher, but I think with, with this screwed on, and because it's early, I can uh, bend and adjust and bend and adjust. I think I'm going to get there. I've, I've shortened this. I've brought this down a little bit more. I did the radius with the aluminium. And now, this stays equidistant just here for, for the whole cycle of the Continental kit. And there we go. So there we go. When it's um when it's open now, that's how it sits. So what I'll be able to do is bring this this flare around here and here and then hopefully bring that into this part but my next measurement needs to be from here down see if this at any point gets higher than that because um, that is going to be what gets in the way
can see there just how close this is and how tight the tolerance I'm going to have to get to get that to look right. Because I don't want anyone walking up to this and thinking, but bumper folds in there, you know. That's like the one thing I want to sort of not do. So what I'll do now is um, I'll probably use some silver tape and then make this section of bodywork in silver tape. And then after I've done that, I'll glass over it. But I think silver tape is the way to go. And also, don't forget, this, this needs a bit at the back as well. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe this should have gone up, but I don't really want to kick the, the bottom of the car up, you know, with the bump. So I'm going to have to get to here and then form a piece of bodywork in here, which is also a very complicated piece of bodywork because, of course, when th the minute things move, everything gets tough. I might be able to attach it to the bottom of the bumper actually and just swing it under. I don't know. But tape, cardboard, thinking and glue will show me the way. And also, can you imagine if you're doing this in steel? Oh my God. Not the way to do it. A lot easier to do it like this. Um, a lot of welding, cutting, re-welding. It'd be a nightmare. Wow, I've done a lot of work on this. This has been um, like, so complicated, you know, to get this thing to move through this gap. If I'd have only known what shape and the position of this gap before I started, but I suppose that's the road you go on, and this is the treasure you find. But now, I've got the Continental kit actually open, so the van would be in its loading position now. And I've got this pretty tight. So then, things I've done. I've flared this bit, so you can't see the back of the bumper when it's out, so everything's covered. And your eye will always be down, so you'll never see this as a gap. I've also made I've made this round, so when that comes out, you know it, it fits to it nice. Also, I've added this piece. Once the bumper's in place, uh, your eye line will always go down, but just in a in like a in a side profile from a distance, you would see that little bit underneath. So what I'm doing is just. You know, just giving a bit like a... Like there's no room for valance on the back of this. You know, um, it's never going to have valance or rolled pan, whatever. So this just hints at that from a side view. From the back, it's so low you can't see anything. But just from the side view, I've added that just to make it look like it might have like a rolled pan behind uh, or underneath, certainly, the bumper. This panel as well, th th this is obviously removable. So this, there'll be a panel gap here and all of this bit comes away and obviously this bit stays as the rear fender. But now when it comes out, it all looks a lot better. And sort of from, from this point here, we've got that perfect radius that I made by taking the measurement from the pivot point of this to the outer point. And now we've got a really, this is really tight. It looks like it's oozing out like toothpaste. And then of course, when it comes right to the end, there we go. Now I might do a bit more flare in here. And this, obviously, you know, there's some sand in there. This is not ready for paint. This is really coming on good. And it has taken a long time, but the, these bits do. But it's these bits that really make a car. Just the way things work, you know, it's the same thing as panel gaps and things being straight. If stuff's straight and the panel gap's tight, things always look a lot better. And if you've got any sort of like, you know, movement in a car, make all of that seem smooth, silent and sort of flowing. It really adds to the car. There it is. And this is what it looks like when it actuates. So there we go. The bumper is now going underneath the car. And nothing, you know, nothing here catches or anything, but it just sort of, that whole bumper just worms it, its way in there. This has come out, this has come out pretty good. And of course, once we're at this point, where that stops, that's where the ramp comes down and loads and unloads the bike. As I said before, the Continental kit is like the start of the ballet of taking the bike down. A lot of people say it's too slow. Like I, I always say this as well. It's like when, when, it, when you buy a cassette recorder in the mid 80s, you don't want the one that goes, 
Got the one with the slowest softer jet possible. And that's how this car will be. Don't forget, there's gonna be a couple of times, you know, you're loading your bike on and off and no one's there. This will load that bike on and off more at shows than it probably will anywhere else. At shows, you're gonna be able to drop that bike onto the floor, pick it back up. The whole car folds in around it and then, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna do that, ain't you? You're gonna do it at a show. It's gonna draw a crowd, people are, oh, whoa, things moving at a static car show. Oh my God. Just, when you're walking around a st static car show, like, please, can one of these cars just do something to entertain me rather than just sitting there? And if you wanna see that mechanical ballet in full, you can click here now, and that'll take you to that episode. And you can see the bike going on, coming off, and all of that. But, it's also going to be a daily driver. This car's going to be driven every day. And you know what? It always starts, always runs. It's got 27 diesel Nissan. It's, it's just so, it's just going to be great. It's going to be reliable, show, reliable, reliable, practical, Ed Roth style show car. You know, I don't think this has ever happened before. Look at this. There's some primer on the 60s truck. We can. You know, we can see some of the, the lovely curves and shapes thereof that make the 60s truck the 60s truck. I'm particularly pleased. Uh, normally at this stage you go over and um, it's just a world of horrors really because the primer really shows you all the things you can't really see. And I know this is white primer and matte white is the, it's the, the kindest colour to anything. You know, like you could strike a match on this bit. There's that much grit and stuff in it. And you know, of course, off the 40 grit, it's so coarse and sandy. But for making shapes like this, it really is like, it's like the holy trinity of sandpaper. 40 grit makes your shape. High build. What we use it with the high build, the high build fills all the scratches. 120 grit gets it all nice and level and right and uh, takes a lot of the sanding marks out. Another go over that and then 320. And 320 will get your car to a state where the whole thing is sanded in 320. That is it, it's finished. So, first off, for shape, 40 grit. Then, high build primer, then 120 grit. Then more high build primer, and 320 grit. Now, you might have to go through that last bit a, a couple of times, that you know, just to get it perfect. But that is the holy trinity of sandpaper. So then, there's only this side done. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna flat all of this down in the, you should know by now, it's 120 grit. <laughs> but I'm gonna do it all in 120 grit, and then at the end of the day, I'll go over it in another coat of this, and then that'll be ready for some 320. But for now, I'm just gonna nib all this up. I don't know if the camera can see, but like here you can see. I don't know if it picks it up, but there's like pitting and scratching, but, like, I'm going to be using the long block for almost everything. In fact, I'll long block everything and then just try and get in the bits I couldn't get in with the long block. But I'll just show you. So this piece of 120, and in here, I can feel there's a lump about there, and, you know, this ain't too good. And there you can see that high spot that I could feel coming through there. But what this does, and particularly when the block goes over this, it will take that out. But we can already, already see there that where there was just pitting, scratching and roughness, now there's just chalky smoothness. Loads of my cars, I could always get the shape. I never quite knew how to get to that everything smooth enough to paint thing. It really is, it's just high build prime, 320, and then once the car is perfect in 320, then you can start going 500 to 1000 and then paint the car. But this really does, the, the, the holy trinity of sandpaper gets you a long way very quick.
can really see when you've got the um, primer on where your problems are. So obviously that was a high spot. Feels pretty good now. And here there were some issues as well. I always, always use the root long block. You know, if you've not got a long block sander, I, I wouldn't even attempt it. Because I used to do it without and used to just wrap a piece of sandpaper around a block of wood. And for cars such as Cosmotron, Dualitron, that is all just done by pushing the block by hand and sanding the whole car. Like what I've done here over the course of about half a day would probably take two days. You know, they're really worth buying. If you're going to do a lot of body work or if, even if you're just going to paint a car, you're going to have to straighten it. Really, just buy one of them. It makes your life so much easier. Yeah, it's going pretty good. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to feel around and I'm going to fill some dips because I can feel them, particularly in this flared bit here. So let's mix up a bit of filler. Let's put some filler on and make this car a little bit straighter than it would have been. So, as I feel down here, like I can feel there, I know it's low, it's still white, all these bits are grey, so I'm having a feeling, and yes, it's definitely low. And the fill I'm using here is uh, U-Pulse Fantastic, and all I'm going to do there, is just drop a bit in there. So I've dropped that in there and what I'll do, I'll just hand sand that small. Um, again, like just here, I can feel a low spot and I can feel that it's rough from like the orange peel, the orange peel in the primer. To so anyone who doesn't know the phrase, orange peel is when the paint's too thick and it looks like the surface of an orange, but you should be getting that in primer if you're putting it on quite thick. But sometimes those unflatted spots, they can, you know, the import, an important guide to where the low bits are. Like along here as well, there's scars in the filler here where like the 40 grit has really gone in. And that's probably as well because this, this bit has always been hand sanded, very hard to sand this with the machine. So you do get those like folds and back deep scratch marks. Whereas off the sander, you never really get that because it's orbital and it's a random orbital. So you don't, um, you don't really, you don't see it so much, but sometimes they can be quite hard to get rid of. So there's some little bits. I'll give that 15 minutes and then sand it down. And I think, I think I'm going to go in with another coat. This coat, this coat went so good. I go in with another coat of primer. And like I say, every time you're getting a little bit smoother, more primer, more blocking, the better your paint job. You know, when it comes to, your, comes to the paint job, this is where great paint jobs are born. Okay then, so, it's not a new project, you've seen it before, but we've been doing a bit on the SS Mercedes. People who, you know, are new to the channel and have not seen the SS Mercedes before, this is how it's going to look. The thing is going to be absolutely amazing, although those wheels and stuff, we've got the wheels for it, they are massive, and we were just having trouble of packaging this whole thing. And what we were doing, we were trying to keep within the law using the taxi chassis and we we're just going to go for that. But we're going to go for, you know, we're going to open ourselves up to more testing, basically. We haven't got the freedom within the law with our extra testing beyond the MOT that we, we need. So we've changed the axles in the car. Now, what I've gone for, I've gone for Jag front and rear from Mark Light 123 Jag. I think they're off an XJ6, off an XJ6 coupe, funny enough, one of my favourite cars of all time. But I ain't got one of them, I've just got the axles. So, we've already got the Jag back end in it. Now what this buys us, is it just gives us a lovely unit that can be welded in. We're keeping it in its cage, don't forget this car is super low, no one's ever going to see it. Um, it's going to be fully painted and detailed though, you know, this, this car, I mean, I'm aiming for that Ring Brothers thing, you know, like the Ring Brothers are just so good, I want to try and have a go at getting a car as good as that, and that's what this is going to be, it's never going to be as good as the Ring Brothers, they're geniuses, I'm just a man in a shed, but you've got to aim high, ain't you? 
But anyway, we got that in. And this narrows the track of the car by seven inches. You know, when you think we would have to have made adapters on the taxi axles. Also, the rear taxi axle was like a two to one ratio. Like, it, it's probably because it had that big plodding diesel power in it. I don't know. But anyway, boom. Jaguar back axle in. We'll be doing more on this in the future. And we'll be doing the full rebuild. Now let's have a look at the front. Right, and then at the front, we've got the Jag front end. Now, we've put this in, and we're gonna be rebuilding all of this, and I think as well, this whole top piece, we're gonna be removing all of this, and then building in a, a custom-made bag mount, a bit like we did on the other axle, which is now just sitting like over there, all chopped off. Sometimes, you've gotta change your mind, or else your car will have a fundamental problem all the way through, and we were aiming, we were, we were going down that route, this car was always gonna have a problem, with its width, because its wheels are so huge, and everything like that. But by doing this, it seems a lot chopping the old front end off, but it's totally worth it. You know, it's gotta be right from the start. So now we've got this, and we've extended, we've had to cut the chassis off, and extend it so it comes round and down. And inside this as well, this will all be seamed around here. Inside all of this, we've made it like really strong. So inside here we've put some thick wall box section, welded that onto the end, made like a upside down gallows bracket to be welded to the front end. And then we've plated in this, um, what is it, like five mil plate, both sides of that. This is just so strong. But we really needed that because it's gotta be strong. It's the front of the car, it's gotta hold on good. So we've done all that. And in future weeks, we're gonna be converting this Jag front end rebuilding it all, every single bush, everything, and we're gonna be fitting them bag mounts. And also on this car, we're gonna run a crank-driven compressor for the air ride system. So, you know, we're, we're not building a car and fitting air ride, we're building a car that has air ride from the beginning. So stay tuned, all of this is gonna be so cool, and this build is just gonna be so amazing, and hopefully, hopefully it will be sort of, I don't know, around where I live class. I'm not gonna say world class, that's just too much, but around where I live class. Okay then, so that's it for this week. Don't forget, click, share, like, bell icon, bell end icon, all of that stuff. Do that, share, share, share. Get more subscribers, get more subscribers. And don't forget, you can also buy a t-shirt from our Etsy store. Anyway, I'm off now. I'm going to the NEC in Birmingham. I'm going to see Deja, which is Andy Saunders' new car. Um, he is my car building hero. And uh, it's sometimes it's nice to see, you know, how to do it right. Anyway, I thank you very much. And good night.